made up. And so all of those young people came from those countries as well as Western Europe. You could only come to that conference if you were heading out for missions. If you're going to give your life to Korea missions, you had to state that or you couldn't come. And here we stood up to speak to thousands and thousands and thousands of European kids. And I remember thinking, it's in good hands. This next generation is in good hands. Anyway, Stuart and I were certainly the only gray hairs there. And the people that were teaching them looked like junior high kids to me. You know? <laughs> the, the youth leaders of Europe are wonderful, and they're very young. They're in their 20s. I 20s, I would say, the ones that are really making waves. And here was Stuart and I hobbling around the place. And I said, you know, I don't think we should have come. This is the time to let the next generation teach the next generation. What are we here for? Plus, I was a little out of practice. I was rusty. I hadn't spoken to kids for a long time. Well, also, you're talking through an interpreter, which halves your material and doubles your frustration. Anyway, I had to go first in the evening session, and the first 20 minutes, it was like pushing smoke uphill. It was so frustrating, and I just felt I wasn't getting anywhere. It was, I just wasn't doing it. And I began to panic inside, and suddenly something happened. It was, it was a bit like I used to skate. I skated sort of semi-professionally, ice skating. And then, and then I didn't for 25, 30 years. And then I came here, and one day with the youth group, I used to run the youth group here, I got on the ice down at Mayfair when they used to have a, a skating rink there. I, you wouldn't have known I'd ever been on skates. I was hanging on to the barrier for about 20 minutes. And then suddenly it all began to come back. And at the end of the night, I was doing it. And it was like that up there in the pulpit. And the wind came into my sails, and a little voice, the still small voice of God, said in a very clear sentence, Jill, gift doesn't age. Spiritual gift doesn't age. I've always had a heart for kids. That's where my training is. I'm a teacher by trade. 13 years in youth mission in Europe, in the streets, doing evangelism. Gift doesn't age. And it was a huge thrill to get hold of that. And I would like to encourage you older people, gift doesn't age. Spiritual gift doesn't age. And so this mother, I don't know how old she was, she believed that and she just got on with it. And gifts aren't gendered. That's the second thing I'd like to say. Spiritual gifts are not gendered. Both men and women can teach the next generation and can pass on what we need to. This is for us to do in partnership, men and women together. So if gift doesn't age and gifts aren't gendered, what are we supposed to be doing? Proverbs 1.8 says, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. There'll be a garland to brace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. And as I looked for this scriptural example, if you wish, and found this woman, I found that she did three things. And the son tells us, the son, speaking of his mother, says, number one, she loved me. Now, all of us can do that. There isn't one of us here that can't go out and love some kids, love the next generation, love the kid next door whose parents don't love him anymore, or the kid over the street, the teenager, whose father almost loves him. That's our job. And if we know Christ, we can go out into the world and just start and love people. Just start and love them. Count them as our own. She loved me. She called him Lemuel. Do you know what that means? Literally, for God. He's for God. That's why I called him Lemuel. And she vowed a vow. She had this dedication where she gave her son to God. This child, she was determined, was loved of God and loved by his mother. Much loved child. And she dedicated him to the Lord. Oh, my son. Oh, son of my womb. Oh, son of my vows. Three O's. Repetition is an emphatic expression of anxious love here. The way it's written. Oh, 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 where's, where's the L? Oh, where's the L? And of all people, believers in Christ ought to be running around their world, finding someone to love. Not so hard. With a great big O inside of us. C.S. Lewis says, love anything in your heart will certainly be wrong and possibly be broken. Those of us that have been hurt because we've loved, been betrayed or deserted or rejected, find it very hard to love. 
again. And your heart, if you've given it away, is very easy to be broken. But if you keep it to try and keep it safe and don't put it out there again, it will become hard and cold and brittle. Lewis says the only safe place to prevent you ever getting hurt again is hell, where there is no life. And so you take the risk, you go out in a limb and you love and you love and you love and you get this O going inside of you and you say to God, break my heart for the things that break the heart of God, which is people and which I believe is the next generation. And this young king says, she loved me. He wrote it down, wrote a book about it. Is that what people that we've influenced are going to say about us? All of us can love if we have Jesus. For this, you need Jesus. But for this, I trust you have Jesus. He is love. I just finished a book yesterday on 1 Corinthians 13 on love. So for this, we need Jesus, but for this, we have Jesus. She loved me. Secondly, she prayed for me. He was the son of her vows, a vow of dedication. There is a hint of the Nazarite vow here. Hannah came to the temple and said, if you give me a son and lend him to me for a little while, I'll give him back to you. He'll be for God. She called him Samuel, not Lemuel, but it has a similar meaning. When Mum Briscoe, there she is again, had her babies in the cot, in the bedroom, she would go with her husband and they would pray over the empty cot before the child was ever born. And they would pray, God, make this child an influence, a change agent for you in the world. And so to me, it's no surprise that both Stuart and Bernard Briscoe have spent their lives roaming the world, loving it back to God. Why? I don't think it's too much to do with them. I think it's to do with their mother. The power of a mother's prayers. Incredible. The best thing we can do is on our knees. Most powerful thing, and it's something the next generation can do nothing about. I like that thought. Sometimes when my beloved unbelievers have a get-together, and they are the most wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people in the world. They don't know the Lord. I used to get very discouraged until I realized I could sit there and I could begin to pray. Yes, I was continuing to talk and interact, but I just went person by person by person. And I remember once getting a, a real neat feeling. I thought, they can't do a thing about this. <laughs> they cannot stop me praying for them. They can't stop me praying for them. They can reject what I say, but they're helpless against my prayers. And I believe that. And so prayer isn't, isn't something you do. Prayer is somewhere you go. It's the waiting room where God waits for you to wait, and me to wait. It's been waiting a long time for some of us, maybe. And we intentionally put ourselves into that waiting room. And we find we've got company. We've got the Lord Jesus there. He's also praying for those we love. And all that can go on when you're interacting with people, and you can pray for them. Try it next time you have a family get-together. And this king said, she prayed for me. My mother loved me, and my mother prayed for me. This queen said to the king, there are destructive forces, O Lemuel, around you. There are those who ruin kings. Now, we are trying to raise up a generation of royalty, of spiritual royalty for God and for good. And there are destructive forces. We've got a lot against us. The counseling that I'm doing on the Christian college campuses would blow your mind. Absolutely blow your mind. How can I ask my girlfriend to have an AIDS test? Those sort of questions. On our Christian campuses. It is, it's heavy to be there. It really is. And these are some of the most wonderful colleges and college professors and leaders and they are pulling their hair out at the moment with what they are trying to cope with on the college campus. And they're saying, these are the kings and these are the queens of the next generation. These are redemptions, royalty, young people. How can we love them? How can we pray for them? How can we train them? And that's the third thing she did.
hearing from Jill Briscoe today on Tell Me the Truth. She'll be right back with more from her message, empowering the next generation. So often we think we can fix the brokenness in our families by working just a little harder at it. But God has clear instructions for protecting and building our relationships so we can experience life-giving families the way He intended. Dig into scripture and learn more in Jill Briscoe's book, Fight for the Family, and Pete Briscoe's three-message series, Families Made New. These resources are our way to thank you for giving to Telling the Truth to help people experience life in Christ. So call now and request your copy of these resources. 1-800-889-5388. 1-800-889-5388. If you've never given before, please take a moment to pray and consider making a donation. You can also give online at tellingthetruth.org. Now here's Jill to wrap up today's message. Jill, what would you say is the most important thing a grandmother can pass on to the next generation? I think if a grandmother hasn't acquired wisdom of life, certainly of God, um, family, uh, just general wisdom, by the time we're in our grandmothering or grandfathering stage, then there must be a lot of regret in our heart. I've, I've got a lot of regret. Oh, why didn't I? Or why I, I should have written, I should have said, etc., etc. But I think wisdom gained through aging uh, needs to be passed on to the next generation. I don't know if my life verse has been quoted here, but... Psalm 71, 16 to 18, even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, O Lord, until I have declared your power and might to the next generation. And uh, that is the biggest thing that we need to pass on to the next